This is Ethan Skolnick for the Five on the Floor podcast on the Five Reason Sports Network. Make sure you follow all of our content at fivereasonsports.com. Spell it out, F-I-V-E, reasonsports.com. There you will get all, again, of our free stuff. We've got columns. We've got videos. We've got, of course, our podcast. You can find the other podcasts in our network. And we will be covering the Super Bowl for Five Reason Sports. We're going to have myself, Chris Kaufman, also Craig Davis, and others covering the Super Bowl in Miami. So we'll have all of those two weeks for you on FiveReasonSports.com. Before we get to today's episode, I want to tell you about another great sponsor of the Five Reason Sports Network. You see all those Uncle Sam's and Lady Liberties twirling their signs out there. It can mean only one thing. It is tax season. But instead of losing your hard-earned cash to companies that hide behind a costume or DIY software that specializes only in headaches, Give Palacio, Palacio, and Zimmerman a call. PPZ has been providing premium accounting and tax services to clients for over 25 years. They'll make the filing process simple through close one-on-one support and maximize your return using their exceptional expertise. If you're ready to file, call 305-595-0303. That's 305-595-0303 or visit PPZ llc.com that's ppz llc.com and now today's episode welcome to five on the floor a miami heat and nba podcast from ethan skolnick with alvon sydney aka alf954 brought to you by the five reasons sports network All right, Ethan Skolnick here with Alex Toledo. You can follow him at Tropical Blanket. Rare, sort of 3 o'clock game today. A weird one. And the Heat lose to San Antonio. We're going to start doing more of these post-game episodes. We'll have a big episode coming up with Alphonse Sidney uh, and Alex and myself about sort of the Heat at the halfway point, a little bit past it at this stage. But a loss that I think, Alex, I was expecting coming into the week, but not after the way that the Heat blew out Oklahoma City, particularly the way they did it during one of our watch parties as we went to three and one in watch parties this season. This That's one, the real story here. That, that is, I mean, we're on a run here and GQ's craft house were two and oh, so we have to go back there. Great crowd there. A lot of giveaways, a lot of fun. Um, and the heat won. And it was, you know, it wasn't, we weren't even paying attention every possession there because the heat had that thing pretty much under control. They had it under control late today, Alex, and then let it get away. Um, and I think a, a few few takeaways from me, I'll get to them quickly and then we'll get to yours. Kendrick Nunn, I thought, played a really smart, solid game, offensively in particular. Uh, great passing down the stretch, I thought. He's making the right decisions. We've talked about that. Dragic gave them a lift on the road, as he's done many times this season. I thought Bam had a little bit of an uneven game for him. Uh, Duncan Robinson, the four threes at the beginning, and then misses his last six. That's going to happen. I didn't like the Jimmy Butler shot at the end, the three when he's out of rhythm, the line drive shot. We've seen too many of those already this season. And and just generally a, a different team on the road than at home. And against a guy in LaMarcus Aldridge who we've talked about, and I think we saw what LaMarcus Aldridge provides, which is he's a veteran who can give you relief buckets, and the Heat really didn't have anybody to go to like that down the stretch today. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what happens when you see what the the type of defensive scheme that the Spurs were employing down the stretch. Like you said, the Heat pretty much had it in control the whole game. They were never up by too much, but, you know, that run in the end happens, I think, because the Spurs end up betting on Jimmy to want to go to the paint because everybody knows that's where Jimmy's best when he's driving to the paint. He's either going to get a free throw attempt or he's going to get uh, a pass to a corner shooter, et cetera, et cetera. He's going to get a bucket. You know, they said, we're going to drop back and we're going to try to cut off everything else that they do, right? With Bams dives to the rim, with the other guys cutting and trying to get open for threes, which sounds like a lot. But if you're just let, say, saying, you know, let Jimmy beat us with jumpers, it's a pretty good plan. And I think it's something that's indicative of what they're going to see going forward in the season probably in the playoffs as well. And so I thought that was interesting. And I think the other thing was that they're obviously a completely different team on the road. Like you said, you know, they're not making as many threes. And even though it's maybe four or five less than usual, that still ends up making a difference, you know. Uh, and I think it's kind of obvious at this point that they're, there's two sides of them, right? The home team and the road team. And not that they're, you know, these guys aren't terrible players on the road, but the margins for error – are shorter because it's harder to get on those runs and it's easier for the, for the home team to get on runs and they're just not responding to it as well as they should be. 
Yeah, and, and look, like you said, margin for error is less. And so when you have a couple guys not play well, it stands out. Uh, Tyler Harrow didn't look himself today. Uh, I think missing some time. Uh, they really struggled with him. Some of the numbers that Christian Hernandez has produced lately about the heat with Tyler on the floor or off the floor, I think what we're starting to see is that they haven't been great with him on the floor of late. It's like he provides those bursts, but the other times the teams kind of chip away against the heat. We're and I think that's something to watch. I, I think we've seen you, – you and I have talked about upside for Hero and none, and I think we both agree the upside for Hero is, is greater – there seems to be more of an overall skill set there, and he's five years younger. But for right now, Kendrick Nunn has turned the corner, and Tyler Hero to this stage, uh, I think, is still kind of in the process of doing that. Like, Nunn has jumped him pretty significantly over the past three, four weeks, and you're seeing Kendrick get those reps down the stretch. I, I think that's something that's going to continue now because I, maybe Tyler gets back into it at home, you know, again, got his, got his feet wet again, but he was not good today. Yeah, I think we're finally seeing the rookie version of Tyler Hero. And, you know, I think Duncan and Kendrick Nunn are kind of a little bit more solid on the road, a little bit more solid in a season sample at this point because they're older. I think their bodies are more developed. And Hero is 19, right? Like, I think we're we're seeing that stretch where he doesn't look as great, where maybe he's a little bit more of a negative on defense than he was before. I think he's not at that point yet, which is, which is why these questions exist about how good they'll be in the playoffs because you're relying on these on first and second year players so much for most of your offense, most of your shooting is around Jimmy and Bam. But even then, like none besides that, none is a three level score right now. And I don't think you could say that about Hero. Like none is going to give you stuff from the mid range. He's going to get you a, a couple buckets in the paint. He's going to get you threes. And, you know, now that he's making better reads, he's just doing the most. In, in that pocket that he's given, right? And I think he's he, he's a little bit further ahead than Hero is right now, even though I do agree with you that he has a higher ceiling. Yeah, and we saw at the end of the game, too, that, you know, different decisions made down the stretch by Eric Spolscher than previous games. Myers Leonard played a lot of minutes down the stretch tonight. That hasn't typically happened. Um, DJJ was kind of taken out there at the very end. We saw James Johnson fill what was supposed to be the justice role again, portions of this game. I, I don't want to over emphasize anything from today because they did enough to win this game until that 10-0 stretch but then it's that 10-0 stretch and kind of the way that they react to it that is somewhat concerning about what happens with them on the road right like the ball movement kind of stopped it was left to Goron to create some stuff out of nothing and then you had Jimmy who I thought got them back in the game that run that two-man game run with him and Bam uh, towards the end of the first half like that game was getting away from them and the two of them pulled him back into it. But at the end of the game, they couldn't summon the same stuff. It seems like he does at home, but not on the road. I want to touch on Jimmy with you today. Because, again, I think there were sequences he was terrific today. But, again, the jump. the same thing. Right, right. Like, there were sequences he was fantastic. But at the end of the games, again, it's like, okay, he had the one thing. Maybe if they'd given him the continuation. I know Spolster hates the review, and the review went against the Heat today. Um, but I feel like at the end of games, like, if they're going to be relying on Jimmy to make that flat three, that's not going to work. Like, we've seen it enough this season. Yeah, I think it's obvious. I think that's something that pretty much everybody has pointed out. Nobody wants to see those pull-up Jimmy threes unless, you know, he's having one of those games where he's hitting everything, and that's not something that happens all the time. I think Jimmy at Spo, I think, has done a great job of recognizing this and utilizing him as such. He isn't really that number one scoring option, right? Like, he is in a sense, right? Like, he'll get you 20 points a game off of drives to the bucket stuff, creating stuff himself, creating stuff for others, and that's what you want, right? You don't want a, a one-tool player who can only score. You want the all-around guy. But if he's not giving you those points, you know, that's why I think that's why Spo knew to go to a system that relies on a lot of other guys giving you double-digit scoring outputs where there's not, there's not too much pressure on one guy to score. And I think that's something Jimmy was sold when he was coming here as well. I don't think he wanted to carry the load. He doesn't play like that at all. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's like if he's not having these games, it's going to be tough going down the fourth quarter, especially with what I mentioned before. The way that there's there's going to be a scheme that defenses go to versus this mm -hmm. team. And again, I'm not trying to overreact to it at all, but it's it's coming. Like Jimmy and Bam are the two best players, like you said. The two way game yep. is their best way of functioning, but they're both best in the paint. And it's yep. not like Simmons and Embiid because they don't have the same type of game. Like Bam moves around and B just kind of eats up space in the paint or takes bad jumpers. That's not really Bam's game. Nope. So it's not as bad, right? 
But at the same time, like their two best weapons are in the paint. And then outside of that, they've got a lot of one and second year shooters. Yeah, they do. And, you know, you see Duncan go cold. There were a couple of those threes from Duncan that looked pretty damn good today. They just didn't go down. Maybe, maybe the game looks a little different. But then we've talked about Myers Leonard and needing some time to get a shot off and having to be in rhythm. And then there was that one shot like towards the end of the game. I forgot how much time was left. Five or six minutes, maybe, uh, where it just looked awful. Like he, he thought about it too much <laughs> and, and missed everything. It was out of rhythm. Like, they're, you know, with every team, there are going to be players. They have to be in their comfort zone. They have to be in the right role to be productive. And Spolster's done an amazing job of that this year. But like you said, when teams start to take things away, if you have, you know, Hero, you know, not being productive, right? So he's not playable. You have, we saw DJJ make a three, but teams want to force DJJ to, to take those shots. You don't want that to be happening consistently. You know, JJ is the same thing. He's made some threes lately, but you don't really want the ball in his hands where he has to try to make one. Uh, so there are limitations with this team, and a lot of this growth is going to have to come, in my view, and we've seen the growth from none. That's a real positive. But it's going to have to come from Bam stepping out and making some jumpers. He took a three today because there was no other choice. But he, he, they're going to need some of that from him. And they're also going to need – Jimmy's going to have to start making some. I, I don't want him taking at the end of the game. Like if he's out of rhythm, but he's going to have to start making some to keep defenses honest. Honestly, Alex, I don't know how he keeps getting to the rim. Like, I don't understand how teams are playing him the way they're playing him. Like they're still crowding him. Like, I don't get it. You know, I think it's because now that then this has been huge for the heat. Like we talked about is the fact that they have so many shooting threats around him. Like none Robinson, hero, Dragic, Myers, like these guys can all really shoot the ball. We, we didn't even mention Kelly there, but like, that's why it's hard to crowd him every single time. And that's why I was a little bit worried about the offense coming into the season, not knowing that they were going to have this level of shooting to surround him. But at the same time, Jimmy is so much stronger than a lot of these dudes. He can just go right through them. Even the guys who are lengthier than him, like they, they, he's really good at creating that contact. And because he's bigger than so many of these guys, he's going to get a free throw or he's going to find the pass. At the end of the day, it's still so valuable, even though he hasn't been a great shooter this year. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, well, we'll talk more about um, you know some stuff right after the break. I want to get to the Kings real quick. But before we do, I want to tell you about a great sponsor of the Five Reasons Sports Network, OneCallLegal.com. That's OneCallLegal.com. Make sure you spell it out. They've got someone there 24 hours a day to handle your case or just get your case started, get you to the right attorney. They've got great attorneys there at the Seltzer Mayberg Law Firm. They handle immigration. They handle personal injury. They handle traffic tickets for basically 49 bucks and up. But you get pretty close to that 49 bucks they did for me, and they got it thrown out. So make sure you check out the Seltzer Mayberg Law Firm, onecalllegal.com, and they're based right here in North Miami, right off of I-95. All right, quick minute here we're going to do, uh, before the Kings game, quick turnaround for the Heat, right? Five, five o'clock start, 26 hours after the last start. Martin Luther King Day, pretty much every team in the league plays on this day. Alex is going to be out there. I, I did something on the Kings a while ago where if you literally pick the guy that the Kings passed on the guy who went right after Sacramento you could have built with the greatest team of all time um now you've seen them again they went with Bagley they passed on uh, you know the Darren Fox turned out pretty good they went with Bagley they passed on pretty decent players at the top of that draft uh, what kind of we've seen the Heat have lost one game at home this year it's to the Lakers and it was a three-point loss on a non-call on basically LeBron fouling Jimmy Butler so they've been pretty much perfect uh, in a minute or less here Alex what are we looking for in the Kings game well, I think the Kings are a team that they really struggled with last year. The, the speed was really giving them problems. They're a little bit more built for it this year because they can try to keep up with the defense and maybe even fail, but they have a lot more of an offensive cushion this year. They're a much better offensive team, and they're now the team that we've talked about in recent, since December, they've pretty much been like a better offensive team than defensive team. So I think the Heat are a little bit better built for it, especially at home where the shooters are making a lot of threes. But definitely got to watch out for De'Aaron Fox because – He's a killer. Like, he is the type of guy who will give them problems, especially because, like, if Bam has to come out to the perimeter and De'Aaron Fox isn't necessarily facing a tough rim protector, he could definitely go right in there and finish. But they haven't been as good this season as they were last season, so it should be a win for the Heat. Like, they – it would be a bad loss for them to lose this one after losing to San Antonio the way they did. Yeah, and they've got a challenging schedule coming up. I mean, there's, there's an Orlando game coming up. We know how that looks. Uh, my thing about them uh, with Sacramento is uh, uh, Bogdanovich has traditionally given some problems too. Uh, but, the, but the big thing oh, is – Buddy's going to kill them. Uh, well, that's the thing. But, I mean, in shooters, I and mean, they got to get on shooters. But this is where – I don't want to belabor it, but we're not expecting to see Justice Winslow for the next two weeks. You could use Justice Winslow on De'Aaron Fox. Like, I mean, maybe he doesn't have quite the quickness, and very few guys do that Fox has. 
but like physicality and all the rest of this. And it's another burden that ultimately Jimmy may have to take, or you're going to see a lot of Kendrick Nunn on him. And, you know, Kendrick's done, I think, a pretty good job. I want to look at the defensive metrics on another podcast, but uh, look, it, it's got, you got to get a win here. Um, they're still in position for the number two seed for, you know, up the all-star game. I know Spolster doesn't want to coach the all-star team necessarily he has in the past, but it wouldn't be a bad thing for him to put a bug in Ch- Giannis's ear uh, or somebody to <laughs> while he's coaching. When I look like the Astros. Uh, exactly. Well, you're right. Well, yeah, you don't want to end up like that. Can I make that. one point to cap off this podcast? Yes. Okay. So it's very interesting that you talk about Jimmy having to take on a, a higher load and as the stretch without justice, it's felt like forever now. But something I was thinking about before we came on here was I think Bam is kind of taking on a much higher load as well. And I think it's affecting the rest of the defense because of what I talked about before. In the same way that Jimmy has to take on the ball handling stuff, Bam has to take on even more defensive duties because he's out there playing with less positive defenders at all times. And I think it's, that's some, some of what's affecting you know, the, the penetration that we're seeing from heat opponents on defense, something that Caius wrote about mm-hmm. in depth on five reasons sports, which is a great article, but it's uh, this effect is having a, this impact that's coming because of justice not being out is now being felt by Jimmy and Bam. I think they're doing a little bit too much. Yeah, agreed. And this is when people talk about them needing a third guy. And Kendrick Nunn has been terrific, but I don't think he's ready to be a third guy. Uh, and and I think they have two-way players, I think. I think they have more. One-way players, except for those two. Yeah, just those two. And, and in both cases, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy, with Jimmy shooting and Bam still developing as a shooter, you know, they're not – I mean, we're not talking about LeBron. I mean, they, they, you know, at his peak. I mean, they're, And DJJ's they're, offense is only in the paint, and they're not really using him as a role guy anymore like they mm-hmm. were a few weeks back, which is confusing to me because I don't think he's a threat at all just standing around the three-point line. Even though I do like when he shoots, I like that he has confidence. But I miss when they were using him as a screen and roller because, my God, that dunk he had today was – Ridiculous. Honestly, it should be it should be illegal. Like he should be going to jail for that. Well, he should be going to the slam dunk contest. We'll see if that actually happens because that 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 should have been announced already. That, that and Duncan, although Duncan didn't help himself. I mean, it's in the last six today. All right, we're going to do a much bigger episode coming up. Uh, we're trying to space these out a little bit, but we want to give you more content too. And again, check out our great sponsors, ecpaclaims.com. You got to file that that Irma claim. Um, you've only got about nine months to do so. So. By then, maybe we'll have a parade down here. We'll see. Um, and also, obviously, check out Gold Club Pompano if you happen to be in that area. I mentioned Seltzer, Mayberg, Auto Nation, and all of our great sponsors. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for listening to The Five on the Floor on the Five Regional Sports Network.